In this video, I'm going to show you how to navigate and manage Outlook folders in Python in order to have access to the Outlook objects inside those folders. This will prove very useful when you want to perform mail searches, organize your mail within folders, or send mail that you have saved in drafts. As always, check the video description for relevant links that I mention in the video. I'm going to use the IDLE Interactive Python shell, which comes packaged with Python. If you want to use the same, just type in IDLE in your command prompt. Otherwise, you can follow along with any code, editor, or IDE that you wish. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we get into folders, let's go ahead and import win32com and start up an instance of Outlook. In order to access folders in Outlook, we need to create a namespace object, which has methods and properties designed for this task. Type in outlook.getNamespace and then pass in Mappy as the argument. Mappy is the message application program interface and is an API for Microsoft Windows that allows applications to handle email. So now that we have this namespace object, there are two primary ways of accessing folders. The first is by using default folder types, and the second is by indexing. The get default folder method is the method that you use to access default folder types. Now, these default folder types have different codes, such as 16 for drafts or 6 for inbox, and the link of all these codes is posted in the video description. If you're looking for quick access to a default folder with the current profile, this is the way to go. It's fast and it's easy. The get default folder method returns a folder object. Now, a folder object has several useful methods and properties, which we'll get to in a moment, but one of these is a folders property, which is an object that represents a collection of folders within the folder. It's this folders object which we'll use to index whatever nested subfolders that we want to access. For example, you can see that in my inbox I've created several subfolders, and none of these are accessible with a default folder type. And this is exactly where indexing comes in handy. We already have access to the inbox, which we got from the default folder method. So let's use this and the folders property to get some of those nested subfolders. Let's use name indexing to access the Python folder. And I can verify that this is the Python folder by printing the name property. Another way to index folders is with zero-based indexing. And this is very similar to what you've already used with a Python list or a tuple. Finally, the folders object has an items method, which allows you to index items with a one-based index. And what this means is that the first item is at index one, which is different than what you typically find in Python, where the first item is at index zero. In addition to the indexing method, you can use the folders object as an iterator. The folders object has a count property, which shows the count of subfolders inside a folder. To add a new folder, use the add method, passing in the new folder name and an optional folder type. You've already interacted with the folder object, but let me cover some of the most useful properties and methods. For example, the name property, the description property. You can actually assign a description with this property if there isn't one already. If you right click on the folder in your Outlook application and click Properties, you'll see the updated folder description there. The Folder Path property, which shows the folder path of the current folder. The Parent property gives you access to the folder object of the parent folder. The Items property is an object that represents a collection of Outlook items, such as appointments, messages, contacts, etc. This is actually the object we're going to get into when we start manipulating email messages in the next video. The folder object has two useful methods, delete and move to. And just to illustrate how this works, let's create a new folder, move it to a new parent folder, and then delete it. With the inbox variable, use the folders.add method to add a new folder called my new folder. And let's save a reference to that with the variable new folder. Next, our new folder has a method called move to. So let's use that to move the folder into our Python folder, which we also have a reference to. Finally, our new folder has a delete method. Let's use that method to delete the folder we just created. Before we go, I want to show you a few more quick things about indexing with folders. The namespace object that we created actually has a folders property. 
And if you print out the name of those folders through iteration, you can see that it's actually the name of the accounts. Each account has a root folder in the namespace object, so if I wanted to access my Gmail account, for example, which I have set up in my Outlook application, I would type in gmail equals namespace dot folders and then index with that account name. I can verify that the account is correctly chosen by printing out the folder name. And from there, I can access my inbox. With namespace, the same indexing methods are available. So my Gmail account can also be accessed with zero base indexing or with the item method. You'll see that collections in Outlook tend to have the same kinds of interfaces. So once you learn one, you can apply the same logic to others. Congratulations. You now know how to navigate through Outlook folders and perform some operations on them. In the next video, I'm going to dive deeper into the items collection, which I only mentioned briefly in this video. However, this is really where the action is, and it's coming right up. See you in the next video.